Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on pulseless electrical activity and asystole. Pulseless electrical activity and asystole are related cardiac rhythms in that they are both life-threatening and unshockable. There may be subtle movement away from baseline, drifting flatline, but there is no perceptible cardiac electrical activity in PIA or a systole, excuse me. Always ensure that a reading of a systole is not a user or technical error. Make sure patches have good contact with the individual, leads are connected, and gain is set appropriately and the power is on. P is one of many waveforms by the ECG, including sinus rhythm, without a detectable pulse. P may include any pulseless waveform with the exception of VF, VT, or a systole. Hypovolemia and hypoxia are the two most common causes of PIA. They are also the most easily reversible and should be at the top of any differential diagnosis. If the individual has return of spontaneous circulation or ROSC, proceed to post-cardiac arrest care. Atropine is no longer recommended in cases of PIA or asystole. So the rules for PIA and asystole include regularity, the rhythm will be nearly a flat line. The rate, there is no rate. The P wave, there are no P waves present. PR interval, PR interval is unable to be measured due to no P waves being present. And QRX complex, there are no QRX complexes present. So the reversible causes of cardiac arrest are something that should always be considered. So it's the H's, which are hypovolemia, hypoxia, acidosis, hypo or hyperkalemia, hypoglycemia, and hypothermia. The T's include tension, pneumothorax, tamponade, toxins, thrombosis, coronary, thrombosis, pulmonary, and trauma, which is unlucky. Although there is no evidence that atropine has a detrimental effect during bradycardiac or a systolic cardiac arrest, routine use of atropine during PIA or systole has not been shown to have a therapeutic benefit. Therefore, the AHA has removed atropine from the cardiac arrest guidelines. <coughs> Preliminary research suggested that epinephrine in higher doses may produce improved results in resuscitation. However, research conducted after the 2010 guideline publication failed to show any benefit over a standard dose of 1 mg of epinephrine. Likewise, the 2010 AHA guidelines offered an alternative vasopressor called vasopressin, which could be used instead of or after the first dose of epinephrine. Subsequent research showed that the vasopressin offered no benefit over standard dose epinephrine. Without a demonstration of superiority, both high-dose epinephrine and vasopressin have been removed, simplifying the ACLS algorithm. <coughs> so I'm just going to walk through the adult cardiac arrest algorithm real quick. Um, so the first step is to activate the emergency response system, and then you should start CPR, give oxygen, and attach the monitor or defibrillator. Then you need to identify if it's a shockable rhythm. If it is, um, then it'd be either VF or VT, and you'd want to go ahead and administer shock. Um, and then go back to performing CPR for two minutes. Um, IV, IO access without interruption and CPR if possible. And then you'll assess the rhythm again. If it's still a shockable rhythm, then you're going to administer the shock. Um, if it's not, then you are going to just continue with CPR and then in about two minutes check and see if the rhythm is shockable again. Um, if no signs of ROSC go to step 10 or 11, if signs of ROSC go to post cardiac arrest care. Then if there was no shockable rhythm to begin with, then it's either a systole or PIA, that's when you're not going to shock. Um, you're going to just perform CPR for two minutes with epinephrine every three to five minutes. You should consider an advanced airway and capnography. Um, and then the second time you check or begin CPR um, after checking for a shockable rhythm, it's time to treat reversible causes if possible. Don't forget we offer online ACLS certification on our site. 
We encourage you to become certified as soon as possible, whether that be in your own time with an online course or in an in-classroom setting. So thank you so much for tuning into today's webinar. We will catch you next time.